Hey everyone, we're going to be looking at dot plots today. Now, we're going to start by doing an overview of dot plots and what dot plots look like. They represent data by using dots. So we have a title here. This one is about a store, store one. We also have a number line, and this is going to represent the number of children's book purchased. Each data point is represented by a dot. To show you what I mean, we're going to actually write out the data for this dot plot. So for this dot plot, for zeros, we have two zeros here. So we're going to write zero, zero. We have three ones, so we'll write one, 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 three ones. We have one, two, three, four, five twos. So we'll write out one, two, three, four, five. We have three threes, one, two, three one four and then we have one two three four fives five 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 and then we have two sixes for a total of 20 data points so this can kind of help you visualize what this means because sometimes we can get the number of dots and the number on the number line mixed up now what we're going to focus on are the shapes, centers, and spreads that you worked on last week with a data set, but now we're going to apply it to a dot plot. So this will be a review for some of those items. We're going to start with the shapes of the data, specifically with a dot plot. Now there can be three different types of shapes. Now what can help us sometimes with the shapes is if we actually trace around the points. And what you may notice on this one is that the shape seems about the same on both sides. It's actually, in this example, exactly the same on both sides. So that means that this is symmetrical data. Symmetric or symmetrical. That means we have a line of symmetry that shows the same amount of points on both sides. Now sometimes it's exactly symmetrical and sometimes it's very close. Now for our second type of data shape. This one looks a little different. Whenever we trace around it, we can see that it's not the same on both sides. Actually, most of the points are located on the left side over here. And then on the right side, we have one point. And so because the majority of the points are towards the left, that means that this data is skewed right because this data point over here, this five, because it's not um, in with most of the points, it is pulling or skewing that data to the right. It has this little tail at the end. Now our bottom one is actually the opposite of that top one. When we trace around here, we actually start with our tail and then we get to the majority of our points, which are on the right side. So that means this one over here on the left has skewed our data left. So this data has skewed left. And it has a tail on that side. And we can also see in this data, we have one column that may be higher than the others, like this one, this one, this one. We can call those peaks. And we can also call, call these group groups of points clusters as well. Now, the way the data is shaped can actually affect our measures of center more than anything else. So we're gonna look at those next. So for our measures of center, we have the same dot plot that we were just looking at, and we're gonna be looking at median, mean, and mode. Now, I went ahead and typed out the points that we already wrote on the first one so we can use them if we need to. First, let's start with our median. Now remember, the median is our middle number, and we have to put our numbers in order from least to greatest. We already did that here, but also when they're in a dot plot, they're automatically in order from least to greatest because it's on a number line. So you have two options here. Since they're written out, you can go ahead and mark out until you get to the center. Also, an option is to mark out the points, um, the dots on the dot plot. We can also do that. So if you mark out one here and one here, you can also make your way towards the middle. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to go ahead and keep talking. So as we make our way to the middle, we know that this is an even 
number of points here. So what you see is we mark out the two and the three. Those are our last points. That means here is our median if you keep going towards the center. So that means our median is directly between two and three. We actually talked about this in our previous vi video on median that there's two ways of doing it. If you know what's exactly between two and three, you can write it or you can find another way. I'm gonna go ahead and let you put what you think the median is here. Okay, some of you may have known that the median right between two and three is two and five tenths. Some of you may not have been sure, so in that case, you should have added up two plus three, which gives you five, and then divide that by two. Either way, you get two and five tenths. Now, for the mean, in this case, we would do the mean like we normally would. You would add up your 20 points, add up numbers, and then in this case, there's 20 points, so you would divide by 20. Now, I will tell you, normally, because our goal is to eventually compare two dot plots, that if you're comparing the mean of two dot plots, a lot of the times you can actually look at the data and see where most of the points are, and that can help you find your mean. So you don't always have to calculate it when you're comparing dot plots, okay? Now, for our mode, now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all this real quick. For our mode, that's the number that appears the most. Now, some people wanna jump straight to the end and say, oh, the most, the biggest number, the six. But mode does not mean that it's the highest number. It means the number on the number line that has the most dots. Which number do you think is the mode? Now, if you counted all the, all the dots to see, and you could have labeled them two, two, three, you could have done it like that, you would see that the two has the most points. It has one, two, three, four, five. Now, another trick here is that the mode is two. Two shows up the most, and we see that here also. Some people put five um, as the mode. That's the number of points, but that's because five twos have shown up. So those are our measures of center that you will be comparing between dot plots later on. Now we're moving to measures of spread. Now for measures of spread, we will need to find the range and the interquartile range. Now for the range, remember that's when we're looking at our lowest number or our minimum number, and then we're looking at our highest number or our maximum number. What do you think the range is? Looking at these dot plots, we see that our minimum or our lowest number is zero, or our least, and our most or our highest number is six. That means we subtract six minus zero to get a range of six. Now for our interquartile range, this is not something that we normally compare on dot plots, but if we needed to compare them, you would find it like you normally would. We listed out all the numbers here, and remember, you start by finding your median, quartile one, our first quartile, our third quartile, and then you subtract quartile three minus the first quartile to get your interquartile range. Like I said, we don't normally compare that on dot plots, but if they asked you to, you would know how to find it. Okay, sorry about that, there we go. Now, getting to our practice, we're gonna ask you four questions on the shape, centers, and spread of this dot plot. The height of all 22 students in Mrs. Danny's preschool class are shown below. First question, A. Describe how the data is distributed. Okay, the data is distributed. It is symmetrical in this situation. Symmetrical. And you could have drawn your curve over the top to see, and you could have also drawn your line down the center to see that it is symmetrical. Okay? Now, let's go on to B. What is the median height of the students in Mrs. Danny's class? 
Now, for your median, you could have written all the data points out. You could have written 32, 33, 33, 34, 34, and so on. Or you could have marked out your dots right on your dot plot. Now, since this data is symmetrical, you will notice that you are marking out the same points on both sides, which leaves you right in the middle with 36. So we have 36 inches as our median. Okay, our next question is C. What is the mode height of the students in Mrs. Danny's class? Now remember, the mode means most here. So when we look at which number here has the most data points, we see that 36 also has the most. So the mode is 36 inches. Okay, now for our last question, D. What is the range in student height? Now remember, for our range, we are, we are going to compare our least amount and our greatest amount, our highest and our lowest. 40 minus 32 gives us 8. So our range is 8 inches. Now, in the future, you're going to be using these different um, measures of shape, centers, and spread to compare two different dot plots to see whose median is higher, whose range is bigger, are they the same, things like that. And we're also going to be doing similar things with box plots. See you next time.